Hello and thank you for joining us on Hello Mayor. I'm City of Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman. Despite our country struggling with the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, Southern Nevada continues to push forward. We look forward to improving our communities with economic development and innovative ideas that make our area one of the most fabulous places to live, work, and play. Today, I wanted to sit down with the mayors of both Henderson and Boulder City to see what amazing things they have working and get their visions for the future. Luckily, I'm joined by Henderson Mayor Deborah March, as well as our wonderful Boulder City Mayor, Kiernan McManus. So thank you both for being here. This is such fun and I'm so thrilled, thank even you. during the tough times we've all been through. So as we like to do, because our viewers may not know you well, uh, we'll start with you, Mayor March, if you would. How about a little bit about your background? Were you born and raised here? Actually, I was born in Detroit, and then oh. I um, graduated from UNLV. My parents moved out here when I was in high school, and I went to school a year back in Michigan and then moved out here and graduated from UNLV. And subsequently, I became a park ranger out at Red Rock oh. and then Lake Tahoe. And, became a social worker in Ely, Nevada for eight years and then moved back down here to work in real estate. And actually for about a two and a half, three year period, I did the city of Las Vegas' economic development marketing before I went to U back to UNLV where I ran the lead institute for real estate studies in the College of Business. Isn't that, and what made you become a political person? I never <laughs> planned to uh, run for office. Uh, Andy Hafen was a, a council person, he became mayor. His seat came open and, and I looked to pursue it, but he had asked me previously uh, to serve as his planning commissioner. For, so for six years, I was a planning commissioner oh. in the city. And boy, you sure learn a lot when you're a planning commissioner. And then, and then you were also on council yourself, correct? Yes. For I, how many years, how uh, many terms? For, I, from 2009 until 2017 when I was elected mayor. Well, you certainly have done wonderful things and timing's been very, very good. And Mayor McManus, Tell us a little bit about your background. Where were you born and raised? Well, I'm a native of Boulder City. Uh, oh. My parents moved there in the early 50s. My dad had received a job offer at the high school, so he taught at the high school for about 15 years. And mm. I grew up there, graduated from Boulder High, went to UNLV for a couple years, and then went back to New Hampshire, where my parents were from, to finish up my degree, and then came back out to Boulder City. And what did you uh, major in when you were in uh, Political science, although the, uh, the intent was not to go into politics. Uh, much of what happens in Boulder City revolves around the federal government. And I thought, you know, if you have a degree in government, that would be a good thing if I were to look for a position there. Hmm. And so the, all this time, how large was your graduating class? Uh, 125 people. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? That's what a beautiful small town is. We're so proud of it. So let's get into the, what was your major, by the way? I gather. Uh, biology and anthropology, I double major. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then you went into all the uh, planning and forestry, mm -hmm. everything yeah. else. Mm -hmm. So how well versed. All right, well, so tell us a little bit about some of the committees that you're on. I know you're on a list of them, as are you, because I sit on some mm -hmm. with you. But uh, just well, I had the good fortune recently to be elected as chair of the Regional Transportation Commission mm -hmm. and the Regional Flood Control District. I also serve as chair of Southern Nevada Strong, which is the regional planning effort that falls under the RTC as well. And anytime I'm called on, I'm willing to volunteer and, well, and engage. And, and, and huge I, challenge right now. I mean, the transportation um, issue and COVID, everything else. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, this is the first time a mayor and a woman have served as chair of the RTC and, and regional flood uh, in its history. And what year was it you came here? I came here in 1973. Oh, yeah. Well, and you look at flood and transportation in those days, the flood channels. I mean, I remember the terrible floods because mm. we came in 64. and. We have had some massive, massive mm -hmm. floods, and what's changed over these years it's is remarkable. remarkable. What a fabulous staff of professionals mm -hmm. that work in there. To see the flooding that occurred under Caesar's Palace those I, years. Right, I worked at Caesar's right after it opened in mm -hmm. 1966, wow. after 
a term at the Riviera in advertising and marketing and publicity. Wow. So, but I remember that flood, all the cars just were swept across uh, the strip and uh, east. It was a terrible, terrible event. But look at how that flood commission is done. It's mm -hmm. just beautiful. And so what are, what are some of the many that you sit on, please, Mayor? Well, I join you on the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. Uh, I'm also on the Regional Transportation and Flood Control District Boards, uh, the Las Vegas Global Economic Alliance. Uh, so there's always something to keep us busy. In addition to everything <coughs> that you do in your normal job. And then um, in Boulder City, are you are council persons were you a council person before? Yes, yes. And how many terms? Uh, I was council member for two years before running for mayor. And did you at that time, it's a part-time job? Yes. Mayor full-time job? Um, it's supposed to be part-time, but no, it's full-time. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and how about in Henderson? It's a part-time position, but you can't treat it as a part-time position, especially during the pandemic. This has been truly a full-time uh, commitment. A really challenging time. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, well, we're going to get to the uh, pandemic and what we're doing, but I think we've had so much coverage on it every moment, every day, all day. Mm -hmm. We just, and it's, it's a volatile, changing, um, inconsistent road we've been taking. And so the main thing is to get to our constituents, make sure they get the vaccine and that you're patient because certainly the state has not been allocated the numbers of vaccines that we need. Um, but sites that are open, let, let's do that as just as a quick synopsis right here. Are there sites in Henderson that you would know that are available for, uh, I gather, just call and make an appointment? Yes, but uh, we actually have a call line through our Parks and Rec program to register people to, to different sites. And we have a site at Sun City Anthem, and I think we've already run over 6,000 people through that site. Uh, we're also looking at moving some sites around to like our Heritage Park and our downtown senior center. So we're trying to reach different populations. In the and so community. you are serving your seniors because I know yes. you have a retirement community as mm -hmm. well. And out in Boulder City, what are your sites? We're small enough that uh, we've been able to have our fire department in conjunction with the small hospital in Boulder City mm. uh, take calls, make appointments, and have people come into one of the city buildings, get their vaccination, uh, wait the 15 minutes, make sure there's no reaction, and then uh, at the same time be scheduled for a second appointment. So we've been able to make uh, good progress with our 70 and over age group. and. As the vaccine becomes available, we'll keep using that method. It seems to have been very successful. I think that's the main thing that we're hearing. I know here in the city of Las Vegas, um, it is the impatience that's forever mm -hmm. there when we don't have the supplies. And so just it, it will be done and we will have that covered. But uh, make sure you call for an appointment and uh, follow up there. So let's talk a little bit about the history of both communities. And I think I'm going to start with um, Mayor McManus because of what we have known to love. Tell us a little bit about the history of uh, Boulder City. And I think that was the key to everything. Well, certainly Hoover Dam made a huge difference in Southern Nevada. And Boulder City, of course, was built in order to house the people who worked on Hoover Dam. So uh, those folks were called 31ers because it, construction started in 1931. And the town was built by those folks. And after the construction was done, obviously many people moved on, but many people stayed as well. And uh, they were very careful about what they did with their community because it, it remained a federal reserve for 30 years after uh, mm. the construction of the dam started. So it didn't have a local government. It had a city manager who was a federal employee. Uh, they decided what happened in town and everybody kind of got used to, well, okay, it's a master plan community and wanted to carry that tradition forward. And is that, uh, I think I've had the good fortune to be out at the museum, but um, that information and where is the museum? Uh, the museum is in the Boulder Dam Hotel uh, the hotel was again built very early on 
uh, have had guests like uh, Howard Hughes mm -hmm. uh, after he crashed a plane at Lake Mead, <laughs> convalesced right. at the hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the museum there, the archives that many people have donated over the years, photographs and memorabilia. Uh, so they do, you know, it's, it's a small museum, but they do a nice job with it. And again, the hotel is kind of a centerpiece in our city, so uh, that's where that is located. So from that, really, I mean, that feeds the water going through the dam, feeds seven states, is that correct? Yes. So it really, that was the piece that probably made everything grow here. And so, but gambling, uh, which is everywhere. Uh, Not in Boulder City. <laughs> Again, this, this goes back to that heritage of being a Federal Reserve. Uh, when our city charter was written in 1960, it states right in there that there would be no gaming in Boulder City, along with no liquor in Boulder City, uh, because the federal government had decided that that activity was not going to occur. So we have the Railroad Pass Casino, which is right on our city limits, just outside our city limits. Uh, but no gaming within Boulder City itself. And yet Boulder City, like the other municipalities, gets a share of money, funding, from the hotels, room tax, where there is gambling and liquor. We do get the room tax. We do not get any of the gaming revenue. Mm. And the alcohol revenue? Well, we got alcohol in a, quite a while ago. Okay. So that, that's there. <laughs> okay, so tell us uh, the history. I do remember in the 60s, I remember Water Street and the mm -hmm. titanium. I remember it was such a tiny community. Yes. What happened? You know, Henderson was established in 1953 and it was basically uh, post-war, but it was actually being used as an area by basic magnesium, which was the miracle metal of World War II. So they would uh, process the metal there that built uh, bombs and planes because it was such a lightweight metal. And so mm. that's where you saw the early plants being developed in BMI, basic magnesium, which is now Landwell developing the Cadence community. Um, there was a, a lot going on to support the war effort. And then when the war ended and thing, we were in peacetime, it was at a, that point that the governor decided that uh, Henderson should be a city. And so we became the city of Henderson in 53. And Henderson has a population now. We've just completed our census. Mm -hmm. What is the population? 341,000 people. Boy, is 56th that 56th largest city. I know Vegas is well ahead of us. But. No, but uh, no. <laughs> but uh, I know you have some awards too. You were named one of the safest cities yes. in the country. Number I mean, two. that is something. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, a spot for the millennials. Millennials. What like other? To come oh, there I hate to hear this. Seniors you like know. to retire there. Uh, okay. No, come on. <laughs> what, what else Just can you bring? Just a great quality of life. Parks and recreation. We actually have received two gold medals for our parks and rec programs, and this year we were a finalist for the gold medal as well and we keep applying each year and, and hopefully we'll get it a third time. So. And so what, um, well, in, in Boulder City, your population is? We're right around 16,000. We've been around that number now for several years, many years. And do you find that those who go on, go somewhere else, are now coming back? You still only have one high school? One high school, two elementary, one middle school. Um, the, what I see, and again, I'm, I'm getting older. You're the um, mayor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you know, people do that. It, it's a small community. There, there is not a vast uh, job uh, availability or housing availability. So people go on with their careers, but I see my classmates now starting to come back to Boulder City and, and buy homes and kind of settle into retirement. So. Uh, that, I see a lot of that. Uh, people will grow up in Boulder City, find jobs maybe in Las Vegas. I know myself, I've worked in the Phoenix area for a number of years. But if you grew My up there... My profession, what is your profession? Um, I was in information technology. 
So one of these millennials is just sitting right here Funny. with us. How do you like that? <laughs> so I'm a little, <laughs> a little past the millennials. It always but. helps to give compliments, but uh, I think that's wonderful. Have you kept up with everything in technology? I try to. Uh, yeah. You know, it's something I was interested in and actually transitioned into that. Uh, so yes, I find it interesting and certainly a, a growth industry for and Southern Nevada. And do you Nevada. see that happening in Boulder City? But with the, and I stand totally corrected from you, but um, is Boulder City, um, are they bent on staying around the same size or are you looking for economic development and growth and residential growth? How many hospitals do you have? One. One hospital. Yes. So, our, what is what is uh, what are you seeing there? Well, I, I with the growth of, of Henderson, uh, what I would like to see is something like a, a small software firm that might be able to uh, move to Boulder City, enjoy the uh, comforts that we have there, um, but knowing that that their business would be directed into the valley, whether it's Henderson. Uh, the growth of software companies here is, has been very good, even with the pandemic. And I think that's a, a good fit to diversify all of our economies. And do you see, uh, tell us a little bit about I-11. What has that done to Boulder City? And uh, strangely enough to me, that you're holding your population at that warm size. You know, it had gotten to the point with the amount of traffic that was passing through Boulder City. Uh, it was not benefiting the Vegas Valley. Uh, it was too restrictive. And it really wasn't benefiting our community either because people were not stopping. They were trying to just get home or get to Vegas and uh, it, it was not helping anyone. So there was a lot of concern when I-11 was built, the bypass. Uh, that that would be the death of our town. Now, could you explain, there are some people that will be watching, don't uh, understand or don't know where the I-11, how it came about, what was the need, what were they bypassing? Well, Boulder City is what they were bypassing. Uh, you know, the original highway that was built during the construction of the dam uh, came up from Hoover Dam, up from Lake Mead into Boulder City. And again, there was just too much congestion there so there's now a road that uh, starts at Hoover Dam, the I-11, and goes south of Boulder City and reconnects at Railroad Pass. And all that traffic now uh, goes to the south of Boulder City. And ultimately, I, I believe it's supposed to connect into Arizona and go all the way down to Phoenix, mm -hmm. although Arizonans have not yet put forth the funds to come up and meet us. Is and eventually correct? go to deep water ports apparently into Mexico and all the way up into uh, uh, Washington and up into Canada. So it's actually the Canamex Highway. It's a portion of the Canamex Highway. So this really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Now your two areas are side by side. Mm -hmm. What um, what has happened to the business though within the within now that you see um, within Boulder City? You know, it was something in preparation for I-11 that I realized that we didn't know who the customers in Boulder City were. So we started getting some of that data. And mm -hmm. what we found is that over half the sales in Boulder City come from people in the Las Vegas Valley. Mm -hmm. So what I see, and it, it's never really been a surprise to me, uh, people like coming to Boulder City. It's a nice, quiet community. Yes. They can enjoy lunch or dinner take a walk around town. Uh, but that's what we found out was those people who were coming to Boulder City most often were coming from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the amount of traffic that came through Boulder City uh, accounted for only 4% of the sales from the uh, Phoenix area. And how much of it is the water traffic for Lake Mead and enjoying boating and fishing and swimming and everything else? Uh, again, that's always been a big part of Boulder City is, uh, you know, boat storage. We have a number of storage facilities out there where people from the valley store their boats, pick it up and head out to Lake Mead. Uh, people traveling, you know, unfortunately because of the pandemic, we've seen a major drop off in international visitors, but that was always a big component in Boulder City as well. People want to enjoy 
everything in Las Vegas, but have an opportunity to go out and see Hoover Dam and Lake Mead as well. You know, as we, as we were working on Southern Nevada Strong, the regional plan for Southern Nevada, what we learned was that our residents lead regional lives, that they do maybe live in Boulder City and come to Vegas for their doctor's appointments, maybe come to Henderson for a grocery visit or, or any number of places where our residents really do travel around the valley. And that's why it's so important that we as cities work together regionally. Well, and too, I mean, for those of you who may not know of our five mayors in Southern Nevada, we meet on a somewhat regular basis mm -hmm. to talk about things that we feel in common. And so each municipality and the county, the open county at large, uh, may have specifics for their own area. Mm -hmm. But what do we have in common? What are there th these things, which of course we're gonna get to. But um, I just, I think of Boulder City and it's quiet and it's beautiful mm -hmm. and it is that access. And I remember coming through Railroad Pass in 64 and as far as the eye could see, there was nothing. A couple of buildings way down there and then a couple of buildings on my left. And I thought, oh my goodness, I have come to the end of the <laughs> earth and wow. And so the wow is Henderson. Goodness, I, I, I want to open this door very wide. You would think you would open it this much to find out about Henderson, mm -hmm. but it has taken off. And so tell, tell us all, all that you're doing in Henderson. Well, we've been really busy. And, and I can tell you a lot of this started uh, with the last economic downturn when we recognized that we couldn't just depend upon the gaming community to... Uh, to solve our challenges, especially with the housing market crash and the things that went on. So we started to work on diversifying the economy and we've been focused on attracting new businesses and industries into our community. And so in the last uh, two, three years, we've brought in uh, Google and two Amazon facilities, the Raiders, the Golden Knights, the Silver Knights <laughs> are now in, Yay, they in just Henderson. Won. Yes, their first game. <laughs> yeah. you know? And uh, there's just, our focus has been to diversify the economy so that so that we are a stronger economy and we won't be subject to when there's a downturn in the resort corridor that it doesn't devastate us the way it did uh, over 10 years ago. So we, we really have worked on uh, diversification. Well, I know driving there frequently, I'm sure everybody else does as we're moving around Southern Nevada, I see the enormity of residential growth. Mm -hmm. Do you know where you were, probably your last census, you were down 200? Um, probably, two, I'm thinking probably 250, so we've probably gone up almost 100 thousand in ten years. But your, your the apartments, the yeah. condos, the different age groups, mm -hmm. your parks and recreation. Yeah, there's different lifestyle choices for people, so there's different product types, whether we have two communities that are actually being recognized for their development. Cadence is in the top ten, along with I think two in Summerlin, so making the top uh, ten. Uh, in terms of development and growth. And then Inspirata is not very far behind. So we have a lot of development in residential communities and along certain corridors like uh, St. Rose, we have some apartments and condos and different product types. So it addresses the needs of different market groups. And how many hotel casinos do you have? Well, I think we have several. We have the, the different stations properties, but then we have the M Resort and uh, Green Valley Ranch, uh, Sunset Station, and uh, so there's other smaller Is properties. South Point as well. in Henderson? No, that's, no, in, that's Clark in, the, in Clark County. Yeah. Um, and then out the Lowe's out at the lake. Yes, the, the, uh, that's just very limited gaming okay. out there. So. And so uh, as we all know, the biggest thing we're dealing, one of the biggest things we're dealing with too, is how do we move people around? And so the three of us sitting right here, uh, it is, and you as the newly elected chair, tell us about some of the considerations of what we, the people who live here and work here, where are we and what is our future? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, this is again, why it's so critical that 
we as mayors and cities work together to make sure that you know our cities abut one another we lead regional lives so we need to make sure that we're planning for the future not only in terms of roads and how we move people along our roadways but also looking at transit solutions so that we can get people out of their cars as populations grow we need to figure out how to uh, either create transportation transit opportunities for people to to take whether it's something with the boring company or with buses and our robust system that we're trying to to grow to address all of the needs of our community and it is challenging during these economic times but well um, knowing the hub first of all we get probably about 30 percent of our population tourist and visitor population from southern california mm -hmm. but for certain uh, the airport and of course that's mm -hmm. been somewhat crippled because of the pandemic mm -hmm. but moving people that want to get up to boulder city and visit maybe staying in one of those cute little hotel rooms in the hotel and just visit or go down to the lake what what are the types of you know in, in the plan yeah. that is forthcoming of which is always we're always working on plans what do you think um mayor is is critical to boulder city as far as transportation well, fortunately, the Regional Transportation Commission has had a bus route out to Boulder City for a number of years now. Um, you know, there's still a rail line from Boulder City that comes all the way downtown here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the rail line that was built for the construction of Hoover Dam. And we have the Southern Nevada Railroad Museum there in Boulder City. Uh, they have a very nice museum there. It's mostly volunteer effort. Uh, it goes out to Railroad Pass now. But when they built the I-11, they built a bridge across the I-11 to accommodate that rail line. Mm -hmm. So at some point, that might be something in the future that allows for moving substantial number of people all the way to downtown Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know back in probably 2008 or 9, I was back in D.C. at the U.S. Conference of Mayors, to which you belong, and uh, sat in on a symposium of Amtrak waited till the end, and my husband was mayor at the time, waited till the end, and the head of the board and the president of the company were there. And I went up and just said, we're in Las Vegas. We haven't had Amtrak coming in from California since uh, probably 98, I think, was the last ride. So what can you do to help us? We want to bring in all those travelers from around the Southwest. And they said, um, we're waiting for a regional plan, and we will not be having Amtrak until that plan is finalized. And just last week, I got a phone call. I received a phone call that that is imminent. And so my hope is, is we look to this constantly moving mm -hmm. um, uh, industry, the travel industry, I and it's still a something about Amtrak coming through that the Vegas to LA route was an important right. priority for them going forward. And then with Brightline and what they're looking to do with high speed rail going well, into Southern California, that's going to be a And I know, uh, I think it was the Marnells that were working on that years ago and then just couldn't get over the hump of getting the extra funding from the federal government. So hopefully infrastructure. So, all right, let's go back a little bit and let's talk a little bit about um, what do you think is going to be coming in uh, the next five to ten years in Henderson? What do you see is happening there economically as well as in other ways? Well, I think we continue to set the table in Henderson for folks to choose to live, work, and play in our community. Obviously, there's areas that we want to continue to improve upon. Uh, our parks and trails are an important priority. Education is a critical priority, and that's something we are all working on to, to solve the challenges because that's what makes a community attractive as well. And then of the connectivity, transportation connectivity is so critical between all of our communities. And um, so setting the table to ensure that it's a great place for people to want to live, work, and play and attract industries and ensure that we're bringing the other services together also, like restaurants and grocery stores and all of the things that people expect when they move into a quality community. And I know we're all working regionally on these issues together as well. Well, and the needs are different in each place. And I know with your limitation on population, should, should a group now come along and say, we want to open up 
that has to be a constitutional change for Boulder City, correct? Uh, a charter change. Yes, yes, a charter change. And does that take two two year sessions by the residents? Um, it would go to the voters and depending on the return of the vote, but um, I don't think you would get too many, you wouldn't get a majority in Boulder City that would do that. But what we do, we, we do have quite a bit of land there in Boulder City. Uh, we're into solar energy. Uh, we have thousands of acres of solar panels now that are producing energy. Uh, much of it was going to California. Right. But with the newest projects, those are now designed to send power here into Las Vegas green energy. Uh, it's also uh, a big help for Boulder City because we lease that land and we have these long-term leases. So that's been a real benefit. Uh, if you want to see growth, again, look out into El Dorado Valley and you will see a lot of solar panels out there right now. Well, I do believe that we, in fact, do use that energy and have purchased yes. it and I'm sure it's the growing field. The thing is I wonder why it doesn't go vertically and why it is always horizontally because it takes up so much land. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go up, I don't know what the plans are. Who are the companies? I don't mean specifically, but are they, are any of the companies that are into this um, our own in Nevada? Yes, NV Energy uh, has mm -hmm. had a project out there from early on. They're involved in a new project now. Uh, we've had Southern California companies that have been doing it as well. And the reason it worked out so well for everyone was all the transmission lines that Hoover Dam uh, had caused to be there from the hydropower are now being used for all of the solar power as well. So it has been a big help for Boulder City as far as revenue uh, because we don't have that gaming out there. Uh, but also it, it is now really paying dividends for Southern Nevada uh, to be able to get this less expensive solar energy. Do you think that something though, as I know driving on the 15 going to Southern California, right over state line there, there is that enormous uh, solar energy field that I don't know if we're buying from there. Um, is that a competitive to what you're doing in Boulder City or? You know, we talk to these various companies uh, quite a bit because they are interested in continuing to grow these projects. As the cost of solar power has gone down, uh, it has become much easier for them to be able to construct these projects. We have two more that are uh, in progress now, they'll add another 2,000 acres of solar energy. So they're very interested. Uh, as technology changes, they do discuss that with mm -hmm. us. So Boulder City was built because of Hoover Dam, right. and so we're still in the energy another. business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's simply fascinating to me. And what is the job growth there? What would you say is it, obviously during construction, it's pretty strong but then as it settles down, you're just providing it, it becomes less so? And that is a, a drawback or a negative about solar energy. It is not labor intensive once the project has been built, but then too, that fits with our community wanting to grow slowly. So they are complementary to one another and, and they do provide jobs out there, but no, it's not a large number of jobs once the construction is completed. And how about storing that solar energy? Uh, one of the projects that's under construction now will have battery storage component to it. That will be the first one. Uh, there have been other suggestions. They've talked about uh, pumping water uphill and letting it run down at night, uh, drilling into Isn't mountainsides and storing air that then gets released at night. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of projects that are being discussed. Mayor March had mentioned earlier about downstream projects. Uh, they're talking about pumping water from Lake Mojave back up into Lake Mead to let that same water run through again because Hoover Dam's not producing as much energy as it can right now because of the lack of water. Well, and I know too, as we talk about water and the, the problems that we have here, um, the desalinization of water is very expensive. 
Um, I know Israel's been very invested in trying to see how that works, but uh, for us. So uh, what do you see with the water issues in Henderson? Are, are you very much crippled by it? Are you, what do you see what's Actually, happening? Actually, we're uh, using less water today than we were 15 years ago because of water efficiency practices, reducing turf in our community, um, putting in systems that save water. And so we're actually conserving quite a bit of water in our community. But that being said, we, we are facing some water challenging times, so it's important for us to continue to do that. And, and I think the uh, Water Authority is also investing in, in uh, practices, and I think they're partners uh, with some downstreamers that, to help do some more water conservation efforts further downstream and look at ways that we can protect more water supplies for Clark Well, County. and too, as we're seeing, um, certainly because of our wonderful weather, uh, we're seeing people move in from all over the country. You see these recent storms and the hurricanes and uh, the flooding that follows. And uh, But you see our issues with the population growth and so many too right now seem to be coming in from California not only because of the pandemic but because of the taxes mm -hmm. um, and the cost of living there. Mm -hmm. So, um, And they I, say urban densities actually support more conservation because you won't be pumping as much water. So for folks to look at urban areas and build maybe high rises or mid rises are probably a smart way to save resources and save water as well. So, and I know there's been some replacement of turf. I know we've done it at our home, but I see it up in Boulder City. I see a lot of it in Henderson. But um, is that something that uh, does seem to be doing well in Boulder City? Well, just as Henderson loves their parks, we do as well. But we are definitely looking at, we have two public golf courses out there, uh, areas where nobody hits a golf ball, planned anyway, to hit a golf <laughs> ball there. Uh, removing turf from those areas to reduce the amount of water that's being used. We live in a desert and mm -hmm. we need to be conscious of that all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as we go back to these conference of mayors or we meet with other mayors from other communities or other groups of uh, very learned people, I think what we're learning, but we also are showing an example mm -hmm. uh, of what you can do in a very arid location and, and working together. One of the things that is so critically important, at least from something I've spent most of my life in is the quality of education. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, knowing we're still in the throes of the pandemic, what's gonna happen on our public school system is on the verge maybe of beginning some hybrid to come back. Um, up in Boulder City with your two elementary, one middle school and one high school. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> what, um, what, how about any of the religious schools that they open? Do you have a charter school? What, what's happening up there? We do have a couple, uh, one uh, school, Grace Community Church has had a preschool through uh, elementary for decades. Um, How are they handling this particular pandemic? Are they opened in, well? Uh, they've been very careful with it. And, you know, they've done a lot of distance learning as well. Uh, we have a couple of other churches that recognize the need for tutoring. Uh, so they've been doing daycare and mm -hmm. uh, the city with our CARES Act funding has been able to provide a little bit of support to them. So everybody's trying to find their own way through this. and. As we all know, nobody gave us a plan ahead of time. So. Right. And is there anything that the um, council and you as mayor are espousing as far as these poor children who have no idea that they've lost, basically lost a whole year um, working with the Clark County School District and the trustees? Um, is there anything, is there a connection there? Well. You know, part of the vaccination plan was to include educators uh, mm -hmm. in that top tier of people to receive vaccines. So somewhere uh, just under 10% of the vaccinations we've provided have been to educators in the hopes that we can get the schools open as quickly as possible. Uh, the Clark County School District, you know, they've made announcements of being able to restart, but clearly there's a lot of concern uh, by people, teachers, if they're not vaccinated. So I think that's really the thing we need to do 
is get those folks vaccinated so that they can feel safe going back into the schools. I think the beauty of being a mayor um, and our consortium of mayors mm -hmm. as we meet, you really have the pulse beat of the people. Mm -hmm. And of course the people are the ones every so often and sometimes more frequently you get an idea um, that needs to pass on. And I think our school system is so enormous. Uh, I, we're number five, of course. Um, your school age children number, the pre-K, let's say pre-K 12, do you have an idea of what that number of your population is? Um, it would probably be somewhere around 15% of our overall population are, are school age children. So uh, to me, the, I mean, and you have a sense in your council, of course, too, has a sense of what the needs are and how to go ahead. Uh, how about in uh, Henderson? What are you seeing there? You know, I think we, uh, we need to be nimble and we need to figure out how to get our kids back into school safely. And so working with the school district to try to make that happen. And certainly even looking to the future, you talked about us being fifth largest in the mm -hmm. nation. Uh, maybe that isn't as nimble as we need to be. Maybe we need to look at ways that we can create more efficiencies to be more responsive to ensure that our, our children's needs are being addressed because they're the future of our community and they've really lost almost a year now. Yes, and uh, one of the friends of the city had said to me, we really need to just put everybody back and have them take a whole nother year and get ourselves open. How many, uh, what are the alternatives that have been happening in Henderson for these children? It's so difficult for so many of these working people to figure out a way, especially if you're a single parent, mm -hmm. but if you're able to um, have somebody stay home with the children, which is difficult enough to raise a child, period, mm -hmm. um, then to additionally have to do all the parenting parts and teach. Yeah. You so know, when the, what shut, do you have? when the shutdown occurred, we actually um, started some childcare right away for our first responders and for healthcare providers because we knew right away that those were the people we needed to get into the hospitals and into the emergency vehicles so that they were responding when the need was there. But then going forward, we've, we've looked at some programming where uh, anyone in the city of Henderson can come into our facilities and, and uh, receive uh, support. They can get kids in front of computers to help them uh, with being successful in their school experience and allowing their parents to go back to work. And that, that's been critical, I think, for our economy to get people back to work you know, Henderson for a long time was kind of the bedroom community where folks lived. And so we have a lot of families that live there. So we need to make sure that they can go back to work anywhere else in the valley as well. Well, what type of employment are you having uh, with your Raiders uh, headquarter facilities and your Gold Knights and your um, and we, we are actually new league? As part of, yeah, AHL, we're excited yes. and they won. Um, but we, we actually have, uh, broken ground on uh, Haas Automation, and they're bringing in 2,500 jobs at 60,000 oh. a year or better, and they're gonna be advanced manufacturing in West Henderson. Uh, and we're excited because this is about mm. diversifying the economy and bringing in higher paid jobs that will help to attract other higher paid jobs. How about your event center? Oh, we're very excited about the Henderson Tell us about center. that. That facility is at the corner of Green Valley Parkway and Paseo Verde, and it will be a facility where we can host graduations, community events, the Henderson Symphony, and of course it will be the home of the AHL team that will be playing hockey in that And location. how, what's the size of it? How many it's does it seat? 6,000 seats. So we really, between the, uh, you know, our Allegiant Stadium and our mobile um, the uh, hockey, the in the Smith Center. I mean, having options all. in our community is so wonderful to be able to go to different parts of our community and participate in recreation events or to have a place where kids can go graduate from high school without having to go down to the university to do that. It's it's wonderful. And do you have magnet schools? Um, we don't have a magnet school no. in Henderson. Okay. We're hoping to get one. Well, we have. Uh, where Votech used to be there, but that's actually in Clark County. It's adjacent to Henderson. But we do have uh, various levels of learning because we do have some charter schools and some private schools in Henderson. So there's some schools that meet in person, there's some schools that are virtual, and some that are um, maybe a hybrid model as well. 
So, I mean, there is something that's certainly for sure occurring, but let's talk a little bit about it because you just alluded to it, the cultural things that are available. Uh, what's going on up in Boulder City and in, in your events and what do you have available for us as touring people? I know one special yeah. thing that we go to every year, except this past. Yes. <laughs> and, and of course the pandemic is, you know, controlled much of what happens, but I know you're referring to Art in the Park. Yes. Um, that was actually started out as an effort to raise funds for the hospital in Boulder City, and that's what it still does, is benefit the hospital in Boulder City. But it grew over the years uh, to where we have, I've been told, over 100,000 people attend the three days of it, uh, first week in October. So we are certainly hoping that we're going to be able to do that this year. But usually throughout the year, every other month, we will have a large event out there, whether it's the uh, Worst Fest that's hosted by the Rotary Club, uh, Best Damn Barbecue. Um, Wonderful, is the, that delicious? <laughs> uh, we have the Art Guild in Boulder City sponsors another art show out there. The Chamber of Commerce sponsors the Spring and Jamboree. And your parades. Uh, Fourth of July is always a big awesome. time in Boulder City. Oh, and that is so charming, and there's so much going on there, but that art show. When is that, the first weekend in October? In October, and as I say, we're certainly hoping we're going to be able to do it this year. Well, and with all the sports and everything, do you have room for plays, concerts, bands, parades? Yes. In fact, we shut down this year, this last year, uh, the uh, Sons of Aaron's Parade, which oh, would have yes. been the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and unfortunately we won't be having it again this year, but hopefully next year we'll be planning for that. Uh, the Henderson Events Center will have wonderful events uh, going on in there, whether it's symphony and other activities. But then also uh, on Water Street, next to Lifeguard Arena, we're going to have this big, uh, big events plaza where folks can come out. We're going to have a outdoor. viewing screen outdoor a viewing screen on the side of the lifeguard arena where people can watch uh, games and then host maybe movies or other community events. And one of the things our Parks and Rec Department has done during this time is to actually um, have these drive-by events. So they might have a concert in the park and people can drive through and listen to the concert and then and then leave. They don't have to leave their car, so, but they can participate in, in events in our parks, which is wonderful to get them out. and. People want to be out, but they also know they need to be safe, too. Well, and, too, I know that uh, in the middle of the night, I'll wake up and I'll think, oh, my goodness, I forgot to buy X. And so I go to my cell phone and I go to Amazon, and it's almost there the next morning, but you now have Amazon. Mm -hmm. well, what is out there in that? Oh, in West Henderson, there's a lot of really great things happening. We have two Amazon facilities, the Raiders uh, corporate headquarters and practice facilities. There's a new 40-acre campus that uh, is going to be built for the uh, Henderson Hospital facility, a new hospital facility at the corner of uh, St. Rose and Raiders Way. Uh, and uh, the Raiderettes are out there, and we're also... I remember them from last year, your state of the city. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, we're looking at possibly another a team announcement coming in the near future. So hopefully we'll have some goodness to say. gracious boy. Is this a fabulous place to live or what? Oh, we're so but I you know when I think of all right Let's talk a little bit about oh one thing I did forget is Nevada State College in Henderson, Henderson yes. right yeah. and so that has been growing. Yes. Do you have um, the community college or a college of southern Nevada Yes. A piece of that in Henderson? We have two campuses and they're very close to one another and they actually partnered on a healthcare uh, life sciences building so that it's a building where they'll be training nurses and phlebotomists and other healthcare workers which is so needed in Southern Nevada. We, and we've learned that through these uh, Yes, we have in certain nursing. I know that we hire from out of state, uh, actually from Wisconsin and Michigan. Um, groups of nurses to come and help us and um, really uh, deliver the needs that people have. I mean, it's just really. Now, we only have a few minutes left, so I want to look to the future. So, Mayor McManus, what do you see happening in Bo beautiful Boulder City? You know, 
what has amazed me is what has happened during this pandemic. I mean, it, it has certainly caused a lot of hardship for people, but you know, I went through our uptown commercial area over the weekend, which is only you know a few blocks long. Uh, there are folks out. You know, outdoor dining has been popular, is even more popular now. Uh, people are out enjoying the better weather. I think people are are past being able to want to get back to normal and get things done. So I, I see a very bright future for Boulder City. We will continue to have our slow growth, but that doesn't mean that we can't do other things to improve what we have out there. And I think folks are ready to go on that. It is, it's such a beautiful, beautiful, warm community. Mm -hmm. And in our fabulous Henderson, what do you see happening, Mayor I, March? I also see a bright future. I think that uh, uh, in Henderson, uh, we've been pretty good about planning, and I, I believe that the reason we are where we are today is because more than 10 years ago, we started planning forward, and I, I'm a, a big supporter of you have a plan and you work that plan, and whether it's the Henderson Strong Plan or our regional plan, Southern Nevada Strong, that we're all as mayors part of, um, making sure that we're planning for a bright future for all of our residents and ensuring quality of life, ensuring we have connectivity, that our trails uh, connect, that, our, uh, that we have complete streets so that all users can use our streets, whether it's bicycles or walkers or buses and, and cars, so that we're, we're really embracing the whole community, that we are part of a bigger whole. And, and I have truly enjoyed working with you as mayor and Mayor McManus and Mayor Lee in North Las Vegas. And, and you know, having that regional cooperation that we have with one another, I think has been so critical. Well, I just, I can't thank you enough. I know we also love our Mayor um, uh, Littman down in Mesquite. Yes. Yes. And uh, we welcome everything from Laughlin to coming in and being part of this very, very wonderful community of Southern Nevada that we all love. But I want to thank you very much for coming. It will be first of many. We haven't even touched on the safety issue and gone deeper into health. But I just know we're beginning to get through this. And it's only been because of the love and caring of uh, leadership and our people, our grassroots people that are getting us there. Mm -hmm. And so I want to thank you both very much for being here. And thank you all at home for watching. And we'll see you next time as we talk with Mayor John Lee of North Las Vegas and Mayor Al Littman of Mesquite for taking a look at what's going on in their areas. So have a great day, everyone. And thank you again. And thank you both. You're just dear friends and wonderful to be partners with you. Thank you.